وجودنا ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المكرمين المنتجبين لا سيما بقيه الله في العالمين روحي وارواح العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ولعنه الله على اعدائهم اجمعين الى قيام يوم الدين اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا محافظا وقائدا مناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا In the return of our Imam, recite the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil. I'd like to congratulate brothers and sisters for this very noble and auspicious occasion of the birth of the Imam of our time, the Imam of the age, the Imam that we are supposed to be the followers of, the Imam that we seek reach the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through obedience and devotion to Him, the one that we receive all the blessings that we receive in our lives, everything and everything, all the material blessings, all the fun and activities that we all had here. All the spiritual blessings that we have, all of them are being received by us through the Imam of our time. The Imam of our time is the link between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this universe. We owe Him everything that we have as a means through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us. <coughs> It's a blessing to be amongst brothers and sisters in this type of a setting and it was enjoyable to participate in this gathering. Uh, just a couple of reminders. We know that if we had the Imam of our time, we'd like to go to him and speak to him. We would like it if someone could have a message from him. If someone would come and tell us that authentically that they have actually seen the Imam and the Imam has told them to deliver a message which is something that obviously is not going to happen over no normal circumstances as the Imam of our time has said whoever claims to have seen me before the coming of the Sufyani they are a liar he's not going to be sending messages like that on a more personal level maybe. But we would wish if someone could deliver that. So although that's not possible, I find that in our ahadith, the sayings that have been gathered from our previous imams, we have a lot of instructions to benefit from. There's one particular hadith that I really, really enjoy reading. Because the language of it is as though someone is delivering a message to us. The way it happens is this individual, a companion of Imam al Baqir, sallallahu alayhi Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa He doesn't live with the Imam. There's a lot of similarities between us and this individual. He doesn't live with the Imam. He's gone to Medina, he visits the Imam. And he wants to go back to his hometown. Where is his hometown? In Iraq, in Kufa. Now, the resemblance that we have with the Shias, with the followers of the Ahlul Bayt in Kufa and in Iraq in general, is that they were a minority. They were a minority as we are a minority in the country that we live in, in the city that we live in. And the instructions that the Imam provides for this companion, whose name is Khaythama, are very applicable to us. Khaythama says, I went to the Imam, Imam al-Baqir, and I wanted to say my farewells to the Imam, and 
he spoke the following words. I'll read and I'll translate. Hopefully we can benefit from this. He says, Ya Khaythamah ablig man tara min mawalina as-salam. Whoever you get to that is our, one of our mawali, has the relationship of wilaya, listens to us, has that love in their hearts, whoever you find of that, and inshallah we hope that we are some of them, deliver my salam to them. وَأَوْصِهِمْ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ Advise them to practice taqwa. This is the instruction that the Ahlul Bayt have repeatedly told us. And of course, it's a Quranic instruction. The very basic definition of taqwa is to implement the laws of Islam, whatever has been provided for us in the Holy Quran and in Hadith. It's very important, brothers and sisters, very, very important. Some of the other ahadith say, they tell us, one who Jabir al Ju'fi narrates from the same Imam, the Imam tells them it's not sufficient to be a Shia if we only have the love of the Ahlul Bayt. The love of the Ahlul Bayt is great, it's very important, it saves, but not alone. This is not sufficient. We've got to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever He says, we have to try to implement in our lives. If we love the Ahlul Bayt, I always have this question for myself. If we love, have this love for the Ahlul Bayt, we are willing to get together in Muharram, for instance. We beat our chests. We shed tears. We spend money in that way to commemorate the Ahlul Bayt. But the Ahlul Bayt went through all of that to provide us with these instructions and we don't even know what these instructions are. This is really not acceptable. They brought these for us to save us. We uphold their, the anniversary of their birth the anniversary of their Shahada. We get together, these are very happy occasions, in the sad occasions we get together, we shed tears, all of that is good, but all of that should be a stepping stone to try to learn more from their teachings and to implement that in our lives. That's the first thing that the Imam says. Second thing that the Imam says, which I think very much applies to us, is وَأَنْ يَعُودَ غَنِيُّهُمْ عَلَى فَقِيرِهِمْ وَقَوِيُّهُمْ عَلَى ضَعِيفِهِمْ You've got to make sure you have a relationship, not just any relationship, a relationship such that we don't look at one another based on our income, based on how much we have, based on what part of town we live in, based on what we can afford, what type of car we have, what type of job we have. These were all going to end at some point. What remains is the Iman and the faith. The Ahlul Bayt say, you need to look at one another as Shias, and then if you have differences in income, it should be such that those that are more capable, those that are, as some say, more fortunate, they have more, they should be visiting those who are less fortunate, as we say, and to try to help them out. This is a very important thing that the Ahlul Bayt practiced, they implemented. We've all heard the stories of the Ahlul Bayt carrying bags of bread and dates and carrying it and giving it to those who were in need. It may not necessarily be a need of that nature, but if we can try to help one another out in different ways, whether it's jobs, lending a little something to try to help out, or whatever other way it will be possible. When someone passes away in this community, everybody should get together, try to help out 
the family members of the deceased. It should be a grief felt by all, not just the family members of the individual who passed away. This is one of the er main areas that I want to focus on. He says it's important that the Shia tell, remember the context. It's a minority. When you're living in a country where, or in a city where the followers of the Ahlul Bayt are a majority, then you naturally, the people you interact with are going to be those of that school of thought. Naturally. Whether you like it or not, you're going to be interacting with lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, followers of the Ahlul Bayt. But when you're a minority, you're scattered, then interaction with others becomes a little more common and sometimes one may forget or it may not be as frequent to come together. This hadith says it's important that you come together and visit one another. What the hadith says is in one another's homes. Invite one another, go to one another's homes, visit. And he explains why. He says, فَإِنَّ الْلُقْيَا بَعَضِهِمْ بَعَضًا حَيَاتٌ لِأَمْرِنَا رَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا أَحْيَا أَمْرَنَا Because when you get together, when you meet one another in your homes, this is going to be bringing to life our affair. And the Imam makes a dua at this point. He says, may Allah bless the one who brings to life our affair. Being a minority, brothers and sisters, our interactions in, uh, at our work, at school, are with non-Muslims for the most part. And we don't a lot of times make it or make that extra effort to come together. The Ahlul Bayt are teaching us, the Imam is teaching us, that it's very important that we do that. If we want to keep the message of the Ahlul Bayt alive, first and foremost in ourselves, in our family members, how many times we've seen family members leaving faith, children being raised and not being familiar with Islam, not having the strength to practice Islam because of being left alone, not having that core group of friends. This really happens. I don't know what type of a community this is the first time I'm visiting this community. But different communities that I've been with, even places where the numbers are much larger than this community, it happens. Youth leaving religion completely. We've got to try to hold on to that faith. If we want to do that, it's important. We can't just be busy with work. We've got to come together, and this coming together is going to lead to the livelihood of that religion, keeping that message alive. Now, in order to keep that message alive, a couple of things that, observations I think that are important. One is that communities come together, form centers where everybody can come together. Visiting one another is great, but at a larger scale it won't be possible to have all of the community members in one's house. Usually the homes can't, well, some people may be able to afford that, but most people wouldn't be able to do that. So we come together, we form these centers. We have so many ahadith attending the masajid. Why does Islam emphasize the importance of Salatul Jama'ah? Keeping that community together. It's very important that we do that in our centers, trying to make sure, make it a point, make the extra effort that we attend. Sometimes we neglect that. Sometimes we feel that work is more important, studies are more important. In the long run, 
in the long run, it is guaranteed that this is the most important thing. Nothing else is going to be worth what we spent our lives on. On a weekly basis, we should be attending. I don't know how many programs you guys have on a weekly basis. There should be sessions that revive the soul. The dua programs should be serious dua programs that we kind of move away from the corruption in the society that we live in. We need that help, we need that boost. The talks should be such that they increase our knowledge. The prayers should bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very important. But on top of that, I don't know how many times you get together like this. It's very, very effective, very important to get together like this as well. As a community, allow the children to interact, not just... Well, let me say this about the centers as well. Sometimes uh, the elders do this, and I'm not sure if it's really Islamically advised. We consider the masjid a very sacred place, which is good. Then when the youth come in, when the younger ones come in, when the kids come in, obviously they're not going to be mature enough to sit down. They're not supposed to be. Sit down and listen to the lecture. They may make a little bit of a noise or whatever, and we see the elders getting on to them. We've got to be very careful with that. We've got to create an environment where at the center, when people come together, the children actually have fun. It shouldn't be such that the center is a place where all fun is removed. We go there and it's all boring. There's nothing there to do. And fun is outside at school with kids, with friends, with neighbors or whatever. That's not appropriate. We've got to make sure we create an environment where the children, the youth, have fun together as Muslims. Not just to get together for prayer, not just get together with, for dua and for talks. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables us that we continue this and we are able to prepare for the coming of the Imam. I don't want to take much of your time. Inshallah, we're supposed to have a, a talk tonight in, in the masjid, which, inshallah, if brothers and sisters are uh, participating or others that are there, inshallah, we'll try to uh, give some more pointers over there. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of the Ahlul Bayt that he hastens the return of our Imam. He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the right of the Ahlul that He enables us to build ourselves, to reform ourselves, to become the companions of our Imam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong the life of and give good health to all of those who are helping the cause of Islam, especially the Maraja and especially the leader. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all of our sins, forgive all the believers, our parents, our grandparents, our relatives, all believers who have passed away of their sins, inshallah. Yeah. If there's any hajat, needs, ill that we have, that we may know believers in this part of the world, elsewhere, where they need help, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them their needs, yeah. relieve them of their pains and sufferings, inshallah. Yeah. Allah. 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 Allah.